Danny after prison show has something to say. My guy, you made people wait this long of a time and you didn't even apologize? What in the world is on your mind, my guy? Wow! Boop! Let's get to it! You already know what this is on the lockout. Today I get up, I'm at home, I'm chilling, I'm trying to have an easy, relaxed day. And to my surprise, because... Not really to my surprise because I always check. I'm going to keep it real, right? Because that's all we know how to do here on the lockout. So I always check the after prison show, Danny, what's going on? Did he respond? Because I, if it was me, I would have been said something. I think that he waited a little too long. But this is like hip hop. This is like rap. You got 24 hours to respond. <laughs> yeah. So that's in my second but anyway, um, yeah, Danny has something to say. He comes back, and immediately I hear him saying, and to the guy that spent the $15, instead of buying his loose cigarettes, uh, I'd like to meet you in person one day, and I'll, take, I'll buy your car and his cigarettes and take you out for dinner. My man, your bogus down low undercover threats or... Tactics of intimidation don't work with a dude. I don't even want to come off like cocky or, you know, like, like I'm so street, but I'm out here. You know what I mean? Like in real time, like, and, 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 and it's nothing to show off about, nothing to glorify. We never do that. But you can't do that to another dude that's been exactly through the same thing that you have been through, and if not worse, because you did time of 40 years, although even if you didn't do it straight, whether it was a split bids or whatever, whether you did 40 years in prison or not, don't make you a tougher guy than the next guy or whatever. And we never promoting violence on this channel because that's not what I do. But one thing I'm never going to allow is let no one intimidate me. I don't do it when I'm off of here. I'm not going to do it on here. But what I can tell you is that you can keep your car in a cigarette. And I'll take you up on any offer to meet you one day. Facts. And I and people that know, know I travel because I've traveled to go meet people to sit down and have dinner and just chat and meet. So let's stop the nonsense and let's get to what you came here for. Stop playing childish games. Another thing is when a person comes back and they say, I got something to say, right? Check this out. I'm going to come right back if you guys grant me the opportunity right after this commercial break because we got to pay the bills around here some way. He needed help. Joe rescued him. And then he turned his back not only on Joe, but on all the viewers and all of us that donated to his situation to help him out. I said on a live, this was a fact, this is not even some made up thing, that we had $15, me and my boy, that day. We took $10, donated it. And kept five beans so we could buy Lucy's and things like that. That's a fact. I remember it. This was like months ago, right? Remember when Joe first came? It was about like eight months ago. He was all nice, humble. He's still like humble, but like in a nice way saying, kiss my buns. You know, it's sad to me. It's sad. And look, I hope that Joe continues to help other people because I think he's all awesome type of individual and i understand that people were like yo i think he was dry that's dry snitching he told on danny this and that come on bro danny told on himself when he called and was like bro i'm gonna do this and do that whatever it may have been he played him and another thing you know what i can't get that he says i noticed that it was a big change of followers that came and said what they had to say 
like they sided with Joe. Like it was a big change. Like these are all new people. <laughs> like this cannot be the people that used to watch the after prison show while Danny was on. It's impossible because they would not had commented that way. The commentators, the way he calls them, right? <laughs> so it's impossible. So I know there's a whole change in the viewership, right? And the and the people that are watching, these are all new people because it could. Bro, it's the same people, my guy, that got fed up and that don't like no one saying that they don't give a shit about them after everything that good people of the world, hardworking people that watch the after prison show done. Another thing is when you say, I noticed that I had a big fan base and a, and and the viewers that were my viewers and they decided to side with Joe and go with Joe. Bro, <laughs> hello. Those were never your viewers again. Let's get on this. Joe, the after prison show existed way before Danny decided to come along and boop. What's up? I'm here. Let's do it. This was already in motion. When you come on someone else's show, the people that are watching and the views that they gain and whoever starts subscribing, they're not your viewers. It's his page. It's his channel. It's his business. And that's why you don't seem to understand. So, you say in one part, Listen to this guy, because I listen good. This dude says, the first time, Joe took not about $9,000. Now he's like, Joe took $6,000. What's it going to be next? Joe took, no, it was only three. <laughs> Bro, you got to remember what you said before. If not, you got to go <laughs> rewind. And go watch that video. Boop, bing, shh. Put that on play, however you do. And listen to what you say, bro. So you don't make... It looks crazy. That's all I'm saying. So with that being said, then... I'm not going to make no more videos. I didn't plan on doing this. I didn't plan on coming on social media. But, you know, this is not going to be an everyday thing, you know. But, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Like, bro, what are you saying? Are you going to make videos or you're not? And you're trying to make, you know, my whole life has changed. I'm at peace right now. I found, I found, I found what you want us to think. Like, you're going to say, I found Jesus. And everybody be like, oh, my God, that's so wonderful. Like, what, you want to leave people wondering what you found? What you found? You found. Then he says, I, I found peace. So people are already in, in our heads. That's the tactic, the game. People affiliate that with, oh my God, he turned this life over to God. How beautiful. And hey, it's a beautiful thing. If he did, more power to you. I, I wish that you, everyone would do that, right? But unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. But anyway, he goes on this you're trying to come now like more calm. You know, this is what I wanted to do. I get it. I get it, right? You, you, the homeboy, whoever was recording, you told you, yo, you, damn, maybe we did it wrong. You came on a little too crazy, right? Or a little too upset or whatever, or trying to prove your point. Like, let's get them, right? And it doesn't work. It didn't work. So then you say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be honest, guys. That whole thing we did was staged. You want me to be honest? Like, there, there you have it, bro. <laughs> Woo, what a load off my shoulder. Woo, I feel better already. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's make content now. No, bro. And then you try to put it like everybody staged. Like, bro, this is what we do. This, they know it. This is what they do. No, bro, it's not staged. Because, like, right now I'm on here. I didn't know what I was going to say. I don't practice or write down what I'm going to say at all. Never. That's why the people and the family members, as I call them, and you want to call them viewers, viewers or what he says, or commentators, whatever. You know, like I said before, when I didn't have a family or I felt I didn't have a family, I came on YouTube and I built one and it, and it helped me a whole lot. And the same way it helped you, you just, 
doodled on your on family. Because these people that were helping you helped you more than I'm pretty sure that some of them helped their own blood relatives. That's a fact. I could bet my life on that. So immediately you come off with like another bad tasty video. Like the guy with the $15 saying me, you know, because I made that video talking about 15. I only have $15. And for the somebody commented and said, you shouldn't have told people you only have $15. Why not? This is America. This is this is the world we live in. It be rough sometimes out here in the hood. And that was a few years ago. And it don't even matter if it was today. There's people right now as w- watching this video with all respects to everybody that don't have $15 in their pocket. I'm just real with it, honest with it. And don't portray to be this rich uh, multimillionaire on social media. Nobody has problems. Everybody's bills are paid. Everybody's happy. Hey. That's not reality. That's not facts. That's a lie. And I'm not good at lying. It becomes a job. And I don't like to work for no one but myself. So anyway, Danny, after prison show. Look, then a dude makes videos. A a dude makes a video like normal. That's what people do on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I understand it. Some people look at it like a form of uh, 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 bullying or whatever. But look, you put yourself out there. It's going to happen. So my whole thing is this. That he says, if uh, for the commenter or the dude that made the video, like it would have been some stuff popping off. Here we go again. My dude, stop it. You're like 78 years old, bro. Stuff popping off. Sometimes we live in that world, you know, like what we had, what we used to do. Poppy, that's not happening right now, bro. It's 2020. That kid who made the video. And you can't listen. And I'm not one to underestimate because a dude is, I don't get it twisted. I understand that you could be of age and feel super young. I feel like I'm 16 years old still. You understand? But you can't come on. I mean, you could do what you want, but I wouldn't come on making a video where I'm trying to like convince people because that's what you're doing. You're trying to convince people that I'm not this piece of shit that everybody seen to be thinking that I am when I said I don't care about them. I don't give a shit about the viewers, right? I care about us. So, and he just happened to have the upper hand and recorded you and put, that's why, bro. That's why I be careful what I say and who t- I say it to. And I delete shit when I send something to somebody and I only send it to you if I could delete it. Because I'm not saying that Joe is a bad person for doing that. But in Joe's sense, I mean, in that point, Joe was smart because look, you wind up trying to come at him after he helped you. So I'm kind of glad that he did that. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said before, I'm pretty sure that he analyzed the type of individual he was dealing with and was like, this is going to be a problem. You know what I'm saying? So he had all that ammo already lined up. And when he let loose, boy, did he let loose. But listen, bro, the whole thing is, and then you say, this is why I don't get. I wanted to do this for educational purposes, to teach people, you know, what I've been through or whatever. They say I'm institutional. I, you know, I didn't want to do the show to begin with. Bro, you're a grown man. If you didn't want to do the show, you didn't have to be there. You could have said no at any moment. Like, what was Joe going to do to you? Like, because it's apparent that you feel like you're superior, like over Joe or, or like if Joe is afraid of you or something. I mean, that's what your mind is telling you, but that's not the facts. Believe me, <laughs> that's not facts. But um, because a dude is trying to do the right thing with his family and his wife at home and trying to build a different life from the life that he was living before and he's trying to do a show and people want to call him a, that he played a, a cop or whatever when he was taking dudes' urines, whatever the case may be. That doesn't mean that the dude is a, a, a straight sucker. You know, it just says that he's trying to do the right thing and look, he thought that was the right decision to do at that moment on his show and he learned from it. It wasn't and we all learn from our mistakes. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean he's afraid of you because you got like... 
Like, I don't know. Like, you both been in the same places, bro. I, listen, and this is for the people that watch. Don't ever be afraid of a person because they did 60 years in prison or because that doesn't make them a tough guy, bro. And people run with that persona because we was taught wrong in the world. That, yo, he'll do, you know, he's a tough guy. He just came home from doing 20 years in prison. Bro, prime example. And I don't know if it's facts. I think I said this before. Uh, the guy that I know from, um, from here online that said he was in, incarcerated with Danny. And he's all in the comments. You can see. And he said, he said proof, showed proof. Yo, his din, his number. He was there that year with Danny and all that. He said, I was with Danny. He was a peacemaker. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a peacemaker, but, you know, he said all that that he was talking about, what he was doing with should they, uh, how he'll deal with this and deal with that. None of that was happening. But, hey, that's for them to deal with. I'm just telling you what's there already. You know what I'm saying? It's public information. <laughs> I'm not coming out with this out of nowhere. But, look, I have nothing against the guy. I just feel that. There was a whole lot different that you could have came about. And every time you make a video, instead of trying to point out other people's defects and what they doing wrong, you got to take ownership for what you're doing wrong. Like, look, all right, man, maybe I should have not said that. I didn't mean it that way. But not at one point in the whole video did you apologize for your voice being on that audio Stating that you don't give a shit about the peoples. And that was the most important thing. Sometimes human beings, we good and satisfied with a simple apology. With a look, I'm sorry for whatever it means to you. But I sincerely apologize. It wasn't meant in that manner. It was... It was at a spur of the moment. I was angry. I wanted to get my point across. I wanted him to put all his attention on me. And it backfired. I thought it was a, a conversation between me and him, blah, blah, whatever. But it would have been better than, you know, Joe, those were my viewers. You know, Joe took all my viewers. Again, it's like putting so much blame on Joe, on Joe, on Joe. And why this whole thing has become what has become for you. And you still have a little following because you still gain almost 4,000 subs and subscribers. People get it confused. And I say this with all respects because I want people to learn the ins and outs of YouTube and all these platforms. Subscribers do not equal money. So people right away think, oh, he has money. He got 4,000 subscribers. The world has this thing in their head that Warpath, On The Lockout, all these other guys from New York, these dudes doing prison shows, they're multimillionaires because the news put out there that dudes were making six-figure numbers. Because every time that somebody comes out from incarceration and they see a dude from the ghetto, the hood, the slums, the streets trying to do good, they want to find a way to take that from you. Because people get upset that they've been working their whole life and this dude just comes out of jail and it's like, boom, and thinks of this idea and puts it to, hey, that's not his fault, bro, that he had a brain and was uh, smart enough to think to put it to work. Everybody could do the same. You just have to find another niche because you've never been incarcerated, but there's a, there's a lot of things for you to do on YouTube. It doesn't have to be what the next person is doing, man. Anyway... My whole thing is that I knew he was going to make another video. I just didn't know when. But to me, you saw Joe's video. I think like my thing is always like you, you took too long. And then people waited this long, the people that did wait around, and not even an apology. I think that would have been the most important thing from the gate. Instead of mentioning me, what I said and you didn't even mention nothing from my recent videos. And I, so I'm figuring you're acting as if you didn't see them and cool. But you mentioned something from a video. I, I know you saw them because you would have said something years ago. But you said something from the old video that I said. I don't get it. Like in the first two minutes of your conversation, you mentioned Joe. You mentioned me. You mentioned the other guy that 
that that that made a video. You mentioned commenters, like you pointing out everybody's wrongs, but never pointed a finger at yourself not once when there's a whole bunch of fingers pointing right back at you like you're wrong my guy like you dead wrong like and you said that you plan on doing this because you're confused right now you don't know if this is your last video or you plan on doing this from time to time there's people that are still wanting to support you there's people that are still gonna watch because even though if they not supporters of you, if they uh, Danny dislike us, right, for for lack, for a better word, just to refrain from the word hate, because it's not cool to hate no one, it's all right to dislike, right? That's why we have a dislike button. If not, YouTube will have a hate button. Imagine they had a hate, 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 <laughs> right? And who has hate? I think it's a, a... Doesn't Twitch have that? <laughs> I see. I could have sworn yesterday I seen a hate button on Twitch. I was like, no, they didn't. But whatever. Or somewhere where you press hate. You know what I mean. So uh, leave in the comments how you feel about all this, man, and what he said on his video, the one he just made, where it says, Danny has something to say. Well, I would imagine you have something to say after everything that's taken place within the course of this past few days I would have had a whole lot to say but it definitely would have not been Joe stole six thousand dollars for me and I gave his crew money out of that money and I did what I did with the money <laughs> I did yeah and I did that I did what I did with the money and that's what I did with it hmm? like and you're confusing me now because that says a whole lot of shit but you giving something to the crew out of your kindness of your heart has nothing to do with Joe. This is why I don't get about people. So it says a lot about a person as a person. If I give you something and then this whole thing has nothing to do with you, I'm talking about Joe, but I'm going to mention the whole crew because I looked out for the guys out of that money and all that. So what, what that was, so what you're saying? And if I was Joe and if you pass me $400 out that money and I see that you got $15,000, and I got bills and I've been using my light, my camera and all this to record you. And Because people think like Joe's seeing money out of this right away. Like it doesn't happen that way. So he probably needed two. Everybody needs money in the world. Who doesn't need money? It's rare somebody that could comment right now and be like, I don't need no money. But you must have, you must be filthy rich. Like, of course, the world doesn't revolve around money, they say, right? And I get that. But have no money and tell me what it was like then for you. Or have no way of getting money. Whether it's this week coming that you got money coming to you. Whether it's in a few days that you got money coming to you. You could be broke right now. We're not a quarter. But having something coming to you is important also. It's like you got money. You're just waiting on it. It's very hard to go on without bread. Believe me. I just don't get why make another video and not apologize to the same people that you're trying to regain as to view you and follow you and support what you're doing. That you want to educate with your prison channel. That you want to educate so they don't go through the things that you go through. And it's cool because we all do that. That's why we all here. Just this is the part where it gets a little serious and we play around. I choose to do it from time to time telling my stories and what I've been through in a coma and all that. And you can see those videos in, in my videos where you press videos on the home pages, the old, more popular videos. Then you know what I mean. Then you hit videos and you see the recent ones. And I do it with a little humor because it's such a serious situation that from time to time I want to make people laugh so we can, uh, you know, hide the pain because it's not always good. Like just pain, 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 pain. Laughter is good, I think, for the soul, right, and for the mind. But uh, with that being said, man, you got to make it clear. Like what are you trying to do? Is that your last video? You want to keep people in suspense? You want to keep people waiting? Is that one of your tactics? Is that one of your staged moves again? Like, because no, now we all staging things. Like, this is all staged right here. I just staged this whole thing. I even planned on having this phone in my hand, all that. <laughs> wow. 
What are we going to do with this guy, Joey? <laughs> and just like you, Dan, we just came and said what we said. Whether you like it or not, uh, you know, that has nothing to do with us. We just thank you for watching too, whether you like it or not. I, 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 I don't get it. Like, am I missing something here? Where's the, uh, uh, uh. Like the humbleness, like being a little more humble. That, that's all I'm saying. Like, I would have been a little more humble with this whole thing. That's just me. That would have been my approach. But you already know, it's on the lockout. Love all people.